Okay, what's going on everybody? My name is Bear and welcome back to another album review. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Path by Fit for a King. The Path is the sixth studio album by American Metalcore band Fit for a King. It was released today uh, through Solid State Records and was produced by Drew Bulk. And this is the band's first release with guitarist Daniel Gailey. Uh, mm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this album was already... I was very iffy on how this album was gonna go when I first saw the singles, because the singles I was actually very happy about, besides Annihilation, fuck that song. Everything else I really enjoyed. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. So we start off with a very slow burn with The Face of Hate. This song really has a lot of very similar instrumentation to Dark Skies, specifically when everything means nothing. The song doesn't really have a lot to it that really sticks out to me, like it just has this very generic guitar riff that plays all throughout the song, and it doesn't really have any kind of build up or anything to make it stand out. The weird thing is, is that this song also seems like the 2013 record Creation Slash Destruction. Like this song just doesn't really stick out to me as a unique track, it just sounds like something I've already heard. Like, it also gives me reminders of their song Backbreaker, and it kind of has the same setup, but there's no real payoff to the song. It just kind of drags on and on, and there's no real joy you get out of it. Which, disappointment is going to run rampant all throughout this review. Breaking the Mirror was the first single for this album, and honestly, when this first came out, everyone thought that this song was kind of too poppy for Fit Bird King, and no, I disagree, because the most poppy song they have is to come later on this fucking album. But this track is so much more solid than you would see surface level. Instrumentally, I really love this song. I think Ryan and Ryan do some pretty good vocals. The breakdown kicks a lot of ass and got me hyped up. But the gleaming factor of the song is the guitar work from Daniel, who delivers a pretty fucking excellent solo halfway through the song. And I can say that the song does have some vaults, especially the Hey Hey's and the Bridge, which is never too good for a Christian rock band. And second, this song does have some ties to As I Lay Dying, which was another complaint I heard about this song. But I do see the parallels, but Fit for a King has done the same type of energy before on The Price of Agony, so I would not say that it's a ripoff. I think that this song is actually really good, and one of the best on the album, to be honest. Then we move to Annihilation. Yeah. Fuck this song. This was one of the songs that was released for this album, and I absolutely hated it when it was released, and I hate it even more now that it's put right after an actually good song. Yeah, this is one of the most disappointing songs Fit for a King has ever released. First, the very repetitive and annoying chorus mixed in with the same ugly guitar riff used throughout 80% of the song just gives Skillet a run for their money. Plus, possibly the most blue-balled I have ever been for a breakdown, as it builds for about 15 seconds and instead of delivering some solid vocals or instrumentals or a fucking breakdown, we get the same goddamn chorus for the third time. Like I said, this song can suck a crab's chode. Then we move to the path. Eh, I don't know man, I'm kinda mixed on this song. Like, honestly, I think that the song is all over the place, and not in the fun way like the Dillinger Escape Plan. Like, this song doesn't know what it wants to be, which is not going to be the last time you hear me say this on this album. At first, I thought it wanted to be a metalcore track, but then this very basic guitar riff in the path that goes on for the entire song throws it off a lot, and, and then after the very irritating chorus, it moves to this weird-ass short solo that gives me a lot of math rock vibes. Then halfway through, we hear like this choir back vocals mixed with Ryan's vocals. Then I thought they wanted to do some unblack metal or something. And then we move to this very subpar breakdown that did get my head moving, but it just sounded like a deathcore song. It's like reading a book that has all of the page numbers randomized so you don't know where the parts are, and you don't know where the story begins and where the progression is. Like, it's all just matched together to a very dramatic song, that doesn't deliver anything well. Then we move to Prophet. Who fucking produced this song? If you listen to this song, you'd understand what I'm talking about. There are two parts in this song that I noticed this weird ass production. The very beginning where there is this weird like Amity Affliction synth tone for like 10 seconds before the instruments kick in, which they would have been better off not including because it literally just kicks into the instrumentals already. And then the two verses in this song, why the fuck are the vocals so overrated and loud? Like, compare it to Ryan's vocals during the chorus, it sounds so completely different. It literally cuts off the actually good instrumental for all of the verses, so that we can hear them. Ironically, there's a line in the song, a voice so quiet we missed it. Yeah, sorry Ryan, we heard you loud and clear, but can you turn down your tone, mister? Literally everything else about the song I enjoy, I think the uncleans are good, and I think the vocal patterns besides the verses are pretty good. I keep comparing these songs to other artists, but 
I feel like this song is what happens if you mix Amity Affliction's Misery with Make Them Suffer's Worlds Apart, which sounds like a good comparison, if it's done right, and Fit For A King did not. This album has just so much on it that doesn't scream Fit For A King to me. There is no real unique personality to it. Like most of the songs I can compare to other artists as their own songs, not even by inspiration, just a blatant copy of another band's style. Then we move to Locked In My Head. Something about this song is literally Ryan Kirby the vocalist saying, I'm going to say this to prep some of you. If you only like the classic typical Fit For A King sound, you won't like the singles, but you'll love the non-singles. See, that's not true at all, because I hate half of the singles, and I hate half of this fucking album. Because I'm a, I'm always up for experimentation on albums. But if anything, besides Annihilation, the singles are the most Fit For A King Fit For A King has sounded on this album. I think that this track is actually a very typical Fit For A King track. Like, there's a less unclean vocals on the track, but I think that instrumentally this is their type of style. Dark Skies and Death Grip are proud of you. But I should also mention that the song is pretty basic in itself. Like, there isn't really anything else to comment on because there isn't a lot of content that isn't very surface level. So I don't really have anything else to say about it. Then we move to God of Fire featuring Ryo Kinoshita of Crystal Lake. Why couldn't the whole fucking album sound like this? Remember what Ryan said about the singles? Why did they only release their most experimental songs as singles and then just fucking release the rest of the album with very little progression or unique attributes to it? Like, the electronic synthy drum beat in the beginning is a nice little touch to add some flavor to this track, mixed in with the distorted vocals. I think really it works with the hardcore instrumentals mixed together and adds a pretty great instrumental. Now, lyrically, it's not much, but I do appreciate it for how hard this thing fucking slaps. Like, tell me every time you hear Ryan and Ryo scream God of Fire, it doesn't it doesn't hype you up and make you want to mosh again. I think that Ryo definitely had some say in this song, as Crystal Lake does have some electronic influences mixed in with their music, but I thought that this song was actually really good. Honestly, Stockholm doesn't really need to be on this album. Like, it starts off a little bit different, almost like it's dripping from the previous track, but then we get like a metalcore type style I really enjoyed. But after the first chorus, I just kind of fell away from it. Like literally, the chorus is just a repetition of the two lines and the, of two lines, and then the verse uses the same beginning mixed in with this very basic metal beat. And then what the fuck? They decide to add trap beats on the pre-chorus. Where is this album supposed to go content-wise? Where is the where is the ingenuity? Where is the progression? Where is like literally this whole album is just all over the place? And like I've said before, I appreciate experimentation. But don't throw all of the genres you can think of on an album and expect everyone to like it. I would say that this is the worst track on this album, but nothing will take Annihilation's crown. I think the next track, Louder Voice, is where experimentation really flourishes on this album, as we actually get to some sort of theme on this album. Like, it begins with a PSA talking about how we have two voices in our head, fear and love, and how one will stay and the other will fade away. And I can take away in this song that love faded away and fear overcomes them now. The first part of the track really reminds me of an old school Asking Alexandria song, but I think what helps me enjoy this song is probably the more high tempo and upbeat theme that the song has. Like, even though it may sound a little bit more somber lyrically, I think that they balance out really well. Plus, the added little chorus backed vocals from Ryan during the bridge was a nice touch added with the guitar solo. I think that the song worked a lot better than on my first listen, but Ryan and Ryan actually do an amazing job with their vocals. And there's a lot more emotion behind them than a lot of the other vocals heard on this album, where they just sounded basic and generic and screamed for the sake of screaming. And then we move to the final track, Vendetta. Literally, this song is Annihilation with a different name. Like, liter like lyrically and vocally, it's just like it. One phrase, then say, this is Annihilation, or this is my Vendetta. And hey, at least for this song, we can actually get a breakdown instead of a cock tease. Okay, my final thoughts on this album. Uh... The album was all over the place. There was no real progression or theme portrayed. There was too much experimentation for this otherwise pointless album. Most of the songs could be compared to another band's style. The singles besides Annihilation were enjoyable, so I don't really know what Ryan's talking about. This album was just disappointing, especially for such a high caliber that Fit for a King can deliver. And this album is actually going to be getting a 3 out of 10. Uh, it hurts me to put to put Fit for a King that low, but I'm just very disappointed in this album. I hope you guys enjoyed this album review. I'm current, it's currently 3.30 a.m. and I'm really upset because, <laughs> because I was very disappointed by this album. I expected a lot more 
Uh, and if you don't know, I have a Spotify playlist where you can check all the albums that I plan to review or will review in the future. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you all later. Hey!